exponentials yesterday, but in general, they're defining it as f of x, remember that's just function notation, is equal to a to the x, where a is greater than zero, okay? When we say something's greater than zero, what is that another way of saying? What, what is that also saying? Something's greater than zero, how else could we describe that number? Positive. It's positive, okay? So it's saying that the base there has to be positive, but it can't be equal to one, okay? Um, and x is any real number. So first question, why can't a equal one? If a were one, what would be going on here? If one were the base of the exponential, we would get the same answer over and over and over again. 1 to any power is 1. So really, we wouldn't have an exponential function. That would be a constant function. Okay, 1 to the x would be, um, is always 1. So that would be a constant function, not exponential. the output or the y values to, and I call it bounce because it's jumping back and forth between positive and negative. So how about we say jump instead. Jump between positive and negative values. And that's just, um, those were just whole numbers that I was plugging in. Okay, don't forget, we can also plug in things like 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.75, 2 we can plug in other things for x, we just tend to favor the whole numbers. Um, so you can't jump between positive and negative values. Now, Functions do typically have positive and negative values. Okay, usually functions aren't strictly positive or strictly negative. Um, that is actually the case with exponential functions. Uh, but um, you can't just keep on jumping back between the two. Okay, there's got to be some continuity. There's got to be a flow there, and there's not if you have a negative base. Okay, so uh, let's look at two examples. We looked at some yesterday. We did graph some exponential functions uh, yesterday uh, in our examples, but we're going to be dealing explicitly with 2 to the x and uh, things like 2 to the negative x. Um, but here's the graph of 2 to the x. Okay, we can plug in values, we can plug in 0, we know the answer is 1, we can plug in 1, the answer is 2, we can plug in 2, the answer is 4. Okay. We could plug in some um, 
numbers in between there and get some different values. Uh, when we plug in 3, we get 8. When we plug in negative 1, 2 to the negative first. Uh, I don't know if you remember much about your properties of negative exponents, but you can get rid of negative exponents by moving that to the denominator. 2 to the negative first is equivalent to 1 half. So that's that point right there. Um, we could do 2 to the negative 2. Well, that's 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. So you can see that point there. Obviously, these numbers are going to continue to get smaller, okay, because as our uh, power is increasing, okay, so we do the 2 to the negative third, we're cubing 2, which is 8, but it was a negative exponent, so we're going to move it to the bottom, so 1 eighth is an even smaller number. So these numbers are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, it's never actually going to equal 0, okay, there's no way for uh, for you to raise 2 to a power and get 0, but they're going to be super, super, super tiny numbers. So you can see your graph is, is getting very, very close to the x-axis um, And when you graph it on your calculator, if you type 2 to the x in your calculator, it'll almost look like your function disappears. Okay, It doesn't actually stop, it's just your calculator can't graph things that uh, in that much detail. Okay. Um, here is the graph of 2 to the negative x. Now, do you see some similarity here between these two graphs? They have the same basic shape. Um, it's just kind of like it's flipped over, right? It's just kind of flipped over. So, next question here. Can you explain why these two functions are mirror images of each other? Can you come up with a reason from the function, from the equation there, 2 to the x and 2 to the negative x? Why would those be opposites of each other? Okay, that's one way to look at it. This, kind of, this has a positive slope because everything about it is positive, so it's increasing. Um, now, we don't really talk about it in terms of slope because slope is positive change, but that's a thought in the right direction. We talk about it being an increasing function. This one would be a decreasing function. Is it two words? Is it two words? Yeah. Uh, I mean, there aren't like two specific words that I'm looking for, but tell me this. What is the difference between this equation and this equation? The x one is negative, okay? The only difference is this. The first one has a positive x, the second one has a negative x. So let's think about it for a second. Anytime I'm building a function that I'm not familiar with, I'm going to do it by plugging in some select values. These, these uh, points that I did in, in blue, that's what I was doing. I was plugging in 0 for x. I'm going to see what I get out for my answer. I plugged in 1 for x. Found out what I got from an answer, plugged in two, so forth and so on. So when I do it for the second function, when I plug in zero for x, well, zero doesn't have a negative. Zero is just zero. So the result's going to be the same. Two to zero is still one. Notice they have that point in common. That point does not change. Okay? We still have that point one, right? Or zero, one right there. When I plug in 1 to the second function for x, when x is 1, my y is 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 half. So it's, it's, it has the same y value as the negative 1 did. But that's what I get when I plug in positive 1. That's why they're mirror images. Because uh, the x has the negative in front of it, okay? It's because the x has the negative in front of it. Um, we could do, we could plug in a couple more values, okay? If I plug in 2 into this second function right here, 
that's the same as 2 to the negative 2, which is 1 fourth. So it has the same y value as negative 2 had for the first one. So whenever uh, there's a negative in front of the x, it's going to flip our graph over the y-axis. It's going to reflect it over the y-axis. Why are people using cell phones right now? This is class instruction. So we are going to graph these transformations, and hopefully by the end you're going to be able to graph something like this that has a bunch of different pieces to it without representing the entire thing. Okay? Now, that looks a little intimidating right now, but we're going to break down all the pieces. Okay? We're going to break down all the pieces. So, uh, first of all, I want you to fill out this table right here. You have five different functions, and then you have instructions, evaluate f of zero. That's just a fancy way of saying plug zero in for x. Tell me what the answer is. Okay, do it for the five different functions. Uh, do it for zero, one, negative one, and then it wants you to evaluate for a large positive number. So take a really big positive number, take a really big negative number, plug that in. It's probably best if you pick the same one for each of them. And then I want you to see if you can uh, fill in that table for observations about these functions. What do you notice? What's similar for all of them? What's different? Can you kind of group any of them together? Uh, do you see similar trends?